My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, there was only one time in the life of our Prophet wasallam that an eclipse took place. And this eclipse it took place when our Prophet wasallam was around 61 years old. And it coincided with one of the most tragic events in the life of our Prophet wasallam. Because we learned that at the age of around 60, our Prophet was blessed to become a father for one more time. And realize that at this age, at the age of 60, our Prophet Sallallahu had already lost almost everybody who was near and dear to him. His mother, his father, his grandfather, his uncle Abu Talib, his wife Khadija who was his confidant and the one who really supported him. His two sons and his three daughters, one after the other, he only had one beloved left and that is Fatima. There was no other immediate family member and none of the wives of the Prophet blessed him with the child other than Khadija. Then when he reached the age of 60, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed him to have another son, another child. And this was through Maria al-Qibtiyya. And Maria al-Qibtiyya gave birth to Ibrahim. Our Prophet as is reported in Sahih Bukhari that the Sahaba said one day the Prophet came and his face was shining bright. His face was beaming and he said, Allah blessed me with a child last night and I shall name him after my father Ibrahim. And they would see Ibrahim with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He would take him to the masjid and they saw the happiness in his face that they had not seen because our Prophet Sallallahu had not played with a, a child for, for his own child for many decades before this. All of the other children, as I said, already passed away. He had buried his own daughters, Ruqayya and Umm Kulthum. And as for in Mecca, he had at least one, maybe two sons. We're not sure whether there were two sons or one son for sure, Al-Qasim, and maybe another uh, was there as well. And three daughters, all of them have passed away. Now he has Ibrahim. And lo and behold, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had willed that Ibrahim is not going to live. Our Prophet brought Ibrahim to the masjid and he was wheezing and coughing. And you could tell that the child was on the, thr the throes of death, that he was wheezing and coughing. And can you imagine the pain? And the Sahaba, they saw the Prophet cry as he's holding his son Ibrahim in his hands. And Ibrahim is wheezing his last. And our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam knows that he's about to pass away. And he says, Inna ala firaqika ya Ibrahim mahzunun. Verily Ibrahim, at your death, we are very grieved. We're very sad that you're about to die. And when Ibrahim died, Ibrahim passed away. Then our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'un. Inna lillahi ma'ata wa lillahi ma'akhad. That to Allah belongs everything. He has the right to take. He has the right to, to give. And we will not say anything except what pleases Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam was in utter grief. Can you imagine at the age of 61 now, and now his last child other than Fatima has been, has been taken away. Allah tested him so many times. And the Prophet sallallahu rarely cried in public. And this is perhaps the only time in public he is crying in front of all of the Sahaba that they are there in the masjid. And the whole Sahaba are overwhelmed with grief because they love the Prophet so much. His grief is their grief. His pain is their pain. His suffering is their suffering. And as he is grieving and the Sahaba are grieving, lo and behold, Allah willed that at that time, the only time in the life of the Prophet wasallam, the sun eclipsed, not even the moon, the sun. It was a full solar eclipse. There is nothing more magnificent, more spectacular than the covering of the sun in the middle of the day. And of course, the rumor spread that even the skies are sad at the death of Ibrahim. Even the sun is crying. The world and all that is in it is sad with the sadness of the Prophet. Why shouldn't they believe this? It's common sense to believe. But our Prophet, on the day his son died, cannot but teach Tawheed. He cannot but preach Islam. We don't believe in superstitions. We are not a people that believe in bizarre rituals and mythologies. No, we are people who believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So on the day he buries his son, he's barely come back from the graveyard and he calls all of the people to the masjid and our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam then led them in a long salah. 
a long prayer. And as Aisha and others said, it was as if he recited all of Qadr al-Baqarah, the, the, the size of Surah al-Baqarah, and he did not finish until the eclipse itself disappeared. And as I said, this is indeed the Sunnah, but it is difficult for us in this land and when we have work tomorrow to follow that Sunnah. Then when the eclipse finished, then he stood up and he gave a khutbah. And in that khutbah, he said that beautiful phrase, the sun and the moon, are of the miracles of Allah. They are the creation of Allah. Their eclipse is independent of the death and the life of anybody on this earth. It's not even as if he was saying, look, even the skies are crying because I am sad. No, he had to speak the truth. As-Sadiq Al-Ameen. So he calls the people and he says, the eclipse has nothing to do with the life and death of anybody in this world. These are of the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So when the sun or the moon eclipses, then sallu wa kabbiru wa saddiqu, saddiqu, that tasaddaqu, that pray and say takbir and give charity until the eclipse goes away. And this is the only time the eclipse happened. From this, our scholars have derived that there's something called Salatul Kusuf and Salatul Khusuf with the Kaf and Akha. Salatul Kusuf is for when the sun eclipses, Salatul Khusuf when the moon eclipses, and they are prayed in the same manner, except of course the Kusuf is in the daytime and Khusuf is at night.